Okay, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, finally, out of the blue corner, he hails from Telford. He's 23 years old, stands 6 feet tall, and weighed in at 107 kilos. He fights out of combat athlete, and tonight is his debut with the cage. Let's hear it for Adam. So here we go with the heavyweights. Referee Leon Roberts getting both men together. Chris Miles in the Venom Trunks against Adam Corbett with the Red Mohawk. Both debut fighters, so obviously the nerves might play a factor when you've got big guys like this. It can all end in a heartbeat. Yeah, physically, there we see there Chris looks the more muscly of the two. Um, looks like he's got the height advantage as well as the reach. We'll see how that plays out in a minute. Both fighters coming to center. Just straight away coming forward, being aggressive. Both fighters lock up. Some good clinch work there from Corbett. But Miles landing a huge knee through the middle. It's very unusual to see heavyweight fighters set a pace like this. Obviously, the larger fighters do want to take their time a little bit. But Miles has set a frenetic pace and landing some great knees from that clinch and firing one up to the head. Now looking to maybe transition to the single, but he's got to watch that neck. Yeah, headshots only standing up in this uh, this part here, so it'll be interesting to see if they carry on with the exchanges like we just started off with. Miles pummeling in, really trying to make his opponent Adam Corbett work. And we see this a lot from debut fighters, this frenetic pace as both fighters come out. You've got to watch out, obviously there might be that massive adrenaline dump later in the round. We'll see how that one pans out as both fighters clinch. Miles really trying to overcome his opponent and both fighters not afraid to stand there and trade punches. Corbett maybe looking to close the range after eating one or two there in the middle. Yeah, this fight was put together um, literally about two weeks ago. Um, so both guys done really well to take it on short notice, but they both were up for a scrap and it looks like um, they're bringing it all to the cage. I mean, at this level, fighters can learn so much from these opening fights, these opening experiences, and they're both leaving all out there on the line, and you can't really ask for a lot more for two, two heavyweights, especially two debutantes, as we say. This is Corbett, who's kind of turned the tide a little bit and pushes his man up against the cage. Might be looking to take the fight to the floor if he can, because he's been getting peppered on the feet. Miles has got quite a bit of home support here. He's a Leicester lad. Um, got there Corbett coming all the way from Telford seems to be turning this fight around, pushing um, Miles up against the cage there. And he's making him work and that's what I like to see when you see the bigger fight, it's about taking the fight out of your opponent almost. I mean, Miles is, will know he's in a fight now, he's got that overhook but maybe he's going he's gonna to look to push his man away to see if he can. Pull it relentless looking forward, standing arm triangle almost, very unorthodox, not reckon we see that. Pull it pushing the pace now. From Miles' point of view, he'll want to maybe push off and create a little space for the stifling game Big of name. Adam Corbett. There's a few shots coming through, maybe a takedown here coming up. Corbett's driving driven forward, he's got to watch the neck. Standing guilty, but there is an arm in, so it's a lot harder to finish. As you see there, he's just abandoned that one. Chris is taking good advice there, he's right in front of his corner with uh, Nathan Leverton and Rob Hannis, the Leicester Shoot Fighters. Um, only a few seconds going now into the first round, very explosive first round. I don't know if it's uh, going to take a lot. A uh, huge fighters. takedown finish right on the bell. Very yeah. close round, very, very tough round of score realistically. It's got the crowd involved, especially the first front frantic exchange there in the first few seconds or so of the headshots. 
there's Gavin Smith um, there in Adam Corbett's um, corner there. Gavin, head coach of combat athletes over in Telford. What sort of advice do you think he's given to him? Um, I mean, for me, both of these fighters uh, showing a lot of uh, explosive potential, but I think the messages from both corners should be to just settle down a little bit into the fight. Yeah, obviously, it's harder to kind of convince debut fighters of this because they're out there and they want to make a big impression, but it's all about relaxing into the fight and, and, and getting kind of a bit more loose a bit more kind of warmed up and those big shots will come the problem that you find a lot with debut fighters especially with big hitting heavyweights is they go looking for that one punch to end it all and often they can leave themselves really vulnerable when they're throwing that single strike but a very good round from both fighters very evenly matched fight this it'll be interesting to see how it pans out in the later rounds and whether as we see so often in heavyweight fights conditioning comes to become an issue Leon Roberts brings him back to the centre again and straight as the, th the first round started we see the second round in a similar way both fighters a bit of win back and some huge knees coming in again from Miles some nice clinch work Corbett doing well to cover up I'm quite sure but it looks like a cut under Corbett's left eye I don't know if I'm, I'm missing that or not tough to see from our vantage point but it wouldn't surprise me all those shots coming in Leon Roberts just checking in very closely looking at, looking at the knees that are going in maybe thought that one went in a little low there some nice knees to the legs from Miles, really mixing it up there. That's the key to a really effective clinch. Controlling the head of the opponent is just as important as where you're throwing those strikes to. Miles obviously likes that clinch, and being the taller man, you often find more dominance in the clinch. The knees haven't got to travel as further to hit their opponents. Both fighters having to work really, really hard. I mean, obviously we're looking at the fact that it's shorter rounds because the semi-pro, but this is 100% action all of the way. It's really going to be a test of heart and a test of conditioning. As Miles seems to have found his home in that clinch. Now we've gone to an over-under position. We've got to watch the net there. Corbett maybe trying to get the guillotine, but nothing really doing on it. Corbett's taking some punishment, but he's, he's quite composed. He's, he's looking to be quite controlled. He's got now... Um Miles up against the cage, but reverse there pretty quickly. He composed a very good point for a debut for a debut fighter. He has been in some tough situations, but he's managed to fight his way out. Both fighters just coming forward and scrapping. Miles throwing a huge knee through the middle. Corbett's got to be careful of those knees coming forward. It's only going to take one of those to put the lights out when you talk about heavyweights. The good needs himself. From Corbett there. But, but because he doesn't have the tight plumb, he's not able to generate the, the same amount of force. He's not able to control the posture of his opponent, which is really the key to effective need in the tight punch. And this is a pure grind, obviously. Both fighters really leaving it all on the line. Really hard work. Pummeling and re-pummeling, switching positions on the cage. And this is a pace that we don't usually see with heavyweight mixed martial arts. This is great to see from two debut fighters coming in there and leaving it all on the line. From the judges' point of view, quite a difficult one to score as well. Both fighters have been active in different areas. Miles probably the tad more aggressive. Yeah, um, how do you think the first round went on the judges' scorecards? And how do you think this one's going at the minute, Ben? It's a very tough one, a tough one to call, really. It depends on how the judges are seeing those knees, and there we see some huge ones coming through. They might prove to be the difference maker between the two. I'm just and thinking that, you know, the past, the past well, the first round, I would say um, Chris, just on the, the control, the cage control, I think probably just like that. And again, sort of replicate it on the, that round we've just seen there. So I think, I don't know, third round coming up, Adam needs to look for a, either a finish one way or the other way, it's a submission or a TKO. Probably, I do think he does need something spectacular because obviously um, the judges will see that the bulk of the round he was kind of getting controlled as we see the Leicester shoot fighters team there. Speaking of the man, Chris Miles just calming him down a little bit, letting him know that he hasn't got to try and take his man out of there with one punch or one knee. All he needs to do is carry on doing what he's doing because he's doing a very good job of effectively controlling where the fight's taking place and dictating the pace. Very experienced corner there. So Nathan Levitt in there. Cornered a lot of fighters throughout the UK in a lot of different events. He'll have been in situations like this. He'll know exactly what he needs to tell his man. Credit to both guys. Both guys taking some big shots and carried on coming. Roberts 
brings them together. Third and final round. Back kick there from Adam Corbett with Miles does the right thing in coming forward. Gonna smother his opponent once again. I mean, this has been Miles' kind of modus operandi really. He's looked to push his man up against the cage and, and nullify any offense, but he has got to be careful of leaving his head in there. You can see he's working his arm through, working the underhook through on the left side, trying to get it over the top into the tie clinch. That's where he's had a lot of success so far. Now mixing it up with some dirty boxing. You can see he's got that clinch locked in him, looking to fire that right knee up the middle. But he's let it go. And Corbett maybe looking to reverse a little bit. He'll back the wheels this and the takedown. First time the fight's at the ground. Miles on top and half guard, looking to free that leg if he can, or maybe just posture up and land some strikes where they become available. Corbett got that, got that leg locked in there. Not massively tight. There is a potential to scoop it out there. What he probably needs to do is use his right, right in step to kind of instricate the thigh a little bit and pull the leg through. That's a, a much more open half guard there. But he's landing nice knees to the body to give his opponent something else to think about. Yeah, he's doing a good job there distracting uh, Corbett is, Chris. Um, Biz, there's no headshots in the you know, wolf sets on the ground. He's working well. I think he needs to try and flip over. If he can get into full mount and look to work a submission, but I think he's doing enough at the minute to, I would say, win the round. Uh, and judging on the past two rounds, depending on how the judges scored it, but at the, at the minute I think Chris is doing just enough to edge a decision. But we, you never know, we might actually get get a submission out of this. It's a very tough one to call, but from, from Chris's point of view, I mean, it's, it's a case of risk reward, really. I mean, he could, in this position, if he can maintain his posture and throw just about enough shots not to get stood off, this round's probably going to be his in the boots because he'll have spent the bulk of it in a controlling position landing strikes. Whereas if he goes to pass, maybe get to reverse and end up in a bad position, he may put himself in a situation where he could risk losing the entire fight. It's very much, it's how much does he want to finish and how much does he want to win. It's that line between the two that you really need to look at. But there we see the pass moving straight to side control. That was well done. And now under the mount situation, postures up and starts landing some strikes. Probably doing well to kind of roll through there. Got to be careful of giving his back there in that situation. Leon Roberts calls yeah. time there. You see, Chris needs, I think Chris needs to be careful there. When you're on with these wall sets, there's no headshots on the ground and he's raining in these big, big punches, you know, there is a chance that you're going to actually hit your opponent in the head. Um, to, be, to be fair, I, I do like the full amateur rules with the three threes with the ground and pan because then if you, you do work um, for a submission and a takedown, at least if you get into full mount, you know, you can use your ground and pound, whereas the guy on the bottom would think, actually, no, I won't do anything and wait for the referee to, to stand us back up. But um, is it, was that a point deducted That there? was a point deducted by Leon Roberts. Changed the complexion of the fight a little bit. Yeah, so Leon, the point deducted there against um, Chris Myers for the uh, head strike on the ground to... This is some frantic clinch work from both guys. Myers looking to land that clinch. Corbett coming forward, obviously knowing that with that point it's a much more deduction, sorry, it's a much more even fight and both fighters just going in there slinging leather now and that's the end of a very entertaining heavyweight tilt. Excellent fight there for two debut guys, uh, I can safely say they, they both brought everything there into the, uh, into the cage. And both were able to keep it going for the whole distance and uh, something we don't often see with heavyweight MMA. Okay, scorecards and our judges have rendered a split decision in favor of your winner from the red corner